Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to put together a few handy beginner tips, things that you definitely want to keep in mind whilst exploring the world of Elden Ring, things that will definitely make your life easier, your life better. Just in general, these are things you want to keep in mind. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have got any more questions, if there's anything else you would like to know about or see. We have plenty of content planned for you guys, but if there's things that you want to know about specifically, let us know and we can of course spin up some more videos for you guys. And and if you do enjoy this, don't forget to subscribe and stick around for more. But to begin with, in at number one, look out for golden seeds. Golden seeds are items that you can use to upgrade your flasks. Now keep in mind the first time you use them, you will only need to use one of these and consuming this at a site of grace will increase the number of flasks that you have. Now of course for the first couple of times you can get away with just using one seed, but beyond that point it will of course need more seeds, but this of course is very useful because more flasks can mean more healing, more FP, just in general things that will help you out in battle and keep you alive. Golden seeds are typically found at golden trees, the sort of minor earth trees. You might see these as you are exploring around the world, these little golden trees. If ever you see them, run up to them, there will be a little purple item for you to collect and this will be a golden seed. Occasionally you can get these from other locations, but generally speaking, looking out for the golden trees will be your sign. In addition to this, somewhat related since we are still speaking about upgrading your flasks, also look out for sacred tears. Sacred tears are another type of upgrade and this time they will increase the quality of your flasks, meaning they will heal more or replenish more FP. These again can be found in a number of different locations. Typically you will find them at churches, they will often be at the foot of the sort of statue. So of course when you're exploring the worlds, again make sure you're looking around, but if you wander over to locations like these, you will again find a purple item at the base. This will invariably be a sacred tier, and again you can take this back to upgrade the quality of your flasks. So now you have a means to get more flasks and better flasks. In addition to this, whilst you are exploring the open world, make good use of your markers. The world in Elden Ring is huge. You will find so many things and sometimes you will encounter things that are far too strong for you to take on at that moment in time, unless of course you're an absolute beast and you just want to fight things with a stick. But generally speaking, you will find things that you might want to go back to and given the sheer scale of this world, given how massive the map is, it would be very easy to forget these. You can open up your map and you can then press X or of course whatever your associated button is depending on what you're playing on. But you can press the button and you can then open up the markers menu and you can then place down markers that will remain on the map and you can use these for a number of different things. I've kind of established my own little key. I have sort of skulls for enemies that I would like to fight. I have the building one for some of the mausoleums that I've been pursuing and things like that. So basically you can kind of use them for whatever you want. But if you find a location and you want to return there later, dropping down a marker will definitely make returning there much easier. In addition to this, when you are exploring new areas of the map, you will of course open up the map and initially it will all be brown. You won't have the map for that area, you won't know where you're going, but if you do pay attention for this subtle icon here, this little sort of pillar icon, this is essentially the location you need to get to in that zone and at the base of this stone pillar will be the map for that area. So if you are ever looking to venture further afield, if you decide that one day instead of kind of following the golden line, you just want to do what I did and just run off into a completely different area to see what awaits you, see what can kill you, then uh, do that, run there and go straight for these pillars because having the map definitely makes your life easier. Of course, you're still free to roam as you please, but definitely having a visible map makes it much easier to navigate the lands and also place down markers if you want to return. Furthermore, if you do happen to get lost, because again, this is a huge game, and of course, depending on the way you want to explore it, I, for one, am definitely going around exploring as much as I can, but if you do want some kind of guidance and you do want a little sort of golden line, so to speak, some of the sites of grace will, of course, have these little arrows, these guiding lights, so they, generally speaking, point to the next general direction you should be going if you are trying to follow the story. So if you are in a position where you're just like, I don't really know where to go, I want to start making progress towards say the next narrative boss, then you can generally speaking follow these, they will typically point to another site of grace and they will kind of give you a loose guidance. The game isn't going to tell you exactly where you should go and of course once you get into dungeons and stuff you still need to find your own way around there, but if you are looking for some subtle guidance then you can follow this. Speaking of guidance, also look out for spirit guides. If you are exploring the world, you may occasionally come across these little sort of spirit ghostly candles or candelabras. If you interact with these, it will summon a spirit guide and in a very similar manner to Ghost of Tsushima, if you guys have played that, and the way that the animals will sometimes lead you to secrets, 
The same too can be said for these. Often they will lead you to a cave, a cave you could have organically found yourself, but sometimes they'll lead you to these locations, which of course then is something else for you to explore, and invariably there'll be something at the end. At the end of that cave there may be a boss that might drop an ash of war, it might drop a weapon, it might drop an item. Either way, looking out for these and interacting with them is definitely very useful. Just keep in mind, sometimes the spirit will walk through enemy locations and uh, they don't have to worry about enemies because they're dead. Whereas you, well, I'll leave you to, you know, work out how to overcome that situation. Additionally, look and listen for treasure dung beetles. They're not officially called treasure dung beetles, but they're basically treasure dung beetles. These sparkly little things that you'll see around the world, they come in different colours. Sometimes the red ones will just replenish your flasks. Sometimes the blue sort of shining ones will drop ashes of war or other things like that. They are very important, but do keep in mind that they do also run away. And if you leave them for too long, they will disappear. However, interestingly, they are, you know, while they are visually quite easy to see, they also have a very obvious audio cue. If you guys listen to this for a moment... You'll notice there is that very sort of obvious, I like to describe it as like a sparkling sound. I know sparkling is a visual thing, but you guys know what I mean. So sometimes you may hear them before you see them. So if ever you do hear this, make sure you wander around because again, if you find a treasure dung beetle, it could have some good stuff. Furthermore, if you guys are new to these types of games, obviously if you are a veteran of From Software titles, you will know all about all the different stats in the game. But if you're new, or even if you're just not massively well versed in these games, the game can be kind of daunting. Sometimes you open up your menu, there are so many different stats and you're like, what does this do? What is dexterity? What is strength? What is endurance? What is arcane? What do all these things mean? Well, fortunately, the game actually kind of tells you. If you go to the menu, you'll see in the bottom left, there is the option for help. Of course, I'm playing using the Xbox controller so I can press the menu button. If you're playing on PC or PlayStation, this will be different. But basically, if you press this button here and you then select explanation, you can then hover over any of the stats you see on the menu and it will give you a description as to what they mean. So if you're like, I don't know what dexterity is, hover over it. And this also applies to any menu. This isn't just for the status menu. If you're in the items menu and you want to know what some other things do, you can open up that again. Generally speaking, in pretty much all menus, there is the help explanation option. So if you're unsure as to what something is, you can do that. Additionally, when inspecting items, don't forget you can also press X to see more details, which is also quite important because sometimes you'll receive items that say you need to read. And by inspecting it with X, you can then of course see the full detail, which will then help you get to the location. Either way, if you're confused, the game helps you out. Moving on from there, in at number nine, if you're struggling occasionally, you can recruit NPCs to help you out. Now I appreciate this won't be for everyone. I appreciate this is a game that often people enjoy the challenge, but if you are struggling with some bosses and obviously you don't necessarily want to call someone in online, occasionally whilst you're exploring certain areas, you may interact with other characters, other NPCs. And in those situations, if they are relevant, sometimes when you walk outside the boss door, there will be a little gold summoning sign. And of course you can then interact with this character and summon them. So when you walk into the boss battle, they too can help you out. Now this does not apply to every single boss battle. In fact, most of them they're not there, but for some of the big major story bosses, some of the like really big cutscene driven ones, they are an option should you need some help. They can still get killed and they're not necessarily the best companions, but if it is just a means to take a few hits away from you, take some attention off of you, it might save your life. And then finally, number 10, just explore. This is a fantastic world. Honestly, I am discovering things every single day. I'm loving my time playing this. And honestly, there is always stuff to find. You go exploring, you find a cave. At the end of that, you find a boss. That boss leads to an item. You go somewhere else, you find a chest that gives you an item that upgrades your flask. Invariably, exploring will lead to lots of cool things. And it's just the best way to experience the world. Sure, you could just run through and fight all the Golden Land bosses if you want to, but you would be missing out on a fantastic world. So if ever you get to a new location, don't worry too much about getting to the next sort of major boss. Stop, explore, run around. You obviously need to level up in the process anyway, so you don't get completely clapped. But also, on top of that, you just find some fantastic things along the way. But anyway, that's it for the time being. Those are 10 handy tips for beginners that hopefully will help you on your adventure. If you guys have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys have missed some of our Elden Ring coverage, check out this video you see on screen. And do keep it locked because we've got plenty more coming your way.